chapter number 8. Deuteronomy simply means the second time of giving the law, the word of God. As the children of Israel were about to get into the promised land, God had to remind them through Moses, tell my children, Deuto means his second, Nomi means law. So it's the second giving of the law. God gave them the word as they were leaving uh, Egypt at Mount Sinai. As they were about to enter, he reminds them. As we are concluding the month of June, getting into July, God wants to remind us with the word. Deuteronomy 8 from verse 14 to 18. And Jay will lead us and each one of us, wherever you are, those in Zoom and those in the house with your Bibles, go to Deuteronomy chapter number 8 and from verse 14 to 18. Let's go for it, Jay. Make sure that you do not become proud and forget the Lord, your God, who rescued you from Egypt, where you were slaves. He led you through that vast and terrifying desert where there was poisonous snakes and scorpions. In that dry and waterless land, he made water flow out of solid rock for you. In the desert, he gave you manna to eat, food that your ancestors had never eaten. He set hardships on you to test you, so that in the end, he could bless you with good things. So then you must never think you have, you have made yourselves wealthy by your own power and strength. Remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to become rich. He does this because he is still faithful today to the covenant that he made with your ancestors. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Amen. amen. It's a very powerful scripture that we find in Deuteronomy. And as we are learning uh, today's teaching uh, is part of the series. Minister Mambwe will be coming next week with a different topic, but for the next few months, I uh, will be carrying you through the teaching on uh, giving. And today's title is uh, Giving is Living. Tell the person next to you, giving is living. Giving is living. Amen. We cannot live without giving. So giving is living. We live because of giving. And I was thinking uh, as I was preparing this uh, uh, teaching the other week, uh, we read about Abraham, how that through giving, he received a blessing. Through giving to the strangers that he welcomed, the Isaac, a son by the name of Isaac, was promised and they received a blessing. So when we look at uh, giving, all of us in a way, we give. And let's uh, remember that cliche, who doesn't like receiving? Mm -hmm. But there must be somebody doing the giving. And as parents, I am sure with giving, you are sometimes uh, pushed to the corner whereby our children, I'm sure all of you as parents, the list of things they want to receive. It seems like this never ends. But for us adults, there comes a time whereby sometimes uh, you're not thinking of receiving anything for your birthday, but not so with our children. And I'm sure as parents, uh, we have seen how that our, parents, uh, our children, they want to receive. And God tells us, he is our father. We saw last week, uh, Abba. Abba simply means source, where you receive, where you get things from. So if God is our father, he is our source. And then he comes to the children of Israel and he reminds them where they had come from, where they were, and the importance of remembering who they give her and the source of all that we have. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 8. And the scriptures will be on the screen and in your Bibles as well. Chapter number 8, Deuteronomy. The second giving of the law. Why did God remind them as they were about to enter the kingdom of God, uh, the, the, the promised land? Why should God remind us? Why should we be reminded of giving 
as people when we are going through hardships. One of the things that are popping up every time you read or listen to the news is that uh, the economic situation, uh, the hardships, people with mortgages are going to be paying more. Is there a way for somebody to give to them so they cushion the impact? We have seen the war in Ukraine whereby Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, is asking the world leaders, give us more. We want you to help us. Give us. Give us. What does the word of God say about giving? And today I want to share with you, giving is living. Without giving, you stop living. If the heart stops giving you the blood to flow through, you are gone. Everything is giving. When we breathe, somebody or something is giving us oxygen. That's why we breathe. That's why we are living. The plant we are saying, uh, we are destroying the ozone layer and uh, we might be experiencing higher temperatures that might uh, destroy the world. We need to preserve these uh, natural things that God has given us because they are giving us life. So somebody has to do the giving. But what is so important about giving? And the six questions that we ask are, what is giving? Who should give? Why should I give? When do I give? Where should I give? Mr. Kaplan came up with these six questions. The what, the why, the how, the when, where, who. So each one of us, we must understand what is giving. When you understand what, then you can move on to say, why should I give? And then you can even go back to the what. Because if you find in the equation the what, then you know the why you are doing something. Amen. So let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 8 and verse 14. These words are very important because God reminded the children of Israel for the second time through Moses as they were about to enter the promised land. Today is reminding us on the 25th of uh, June as we are about to conclude the month halfway of the year. Why should we give? Hear what the Bible says. Deuteronomy 8, 14. When your heart is lifted and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. So he's telling them, don't forget your God. Don't forget where you are coming from. When your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So God is telling us to say, see where you have come from. And remember, where you were in bondage. The children of Israel were in bondage for many years and they suffered a lot. And now they are out and they are going to the promised land. Verse 15, Deuteronomy 8, 15. Remember who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which where fiery uh, serpents, snakes, and scorpions, and thirsty land, where there was no water. Who brought you water from the rock, from a flint of a rock? In other words, God is saying, Shekinah, remember from the time you were born to where you are 15 years later, who has helped you through all these years? Richard, remember, when you went to school in China, back to Ghana, through to England, who has brought you this far? Pastor Bonfest is saying, look where you come from. Who has brought you all these uh, 40 plus years that you've been on earth? Sister Linda, God says, Deuteronomy 8, 15, he is the one who led you through even in the wilderness, and I'm sure all of us, time and again, we go through challenges, wilderness, 
We go those, uh, we go through all those uh, spells of life whereby you turn this side, you want a job, and no one is giving you a job. You look into the account, you are scared to use your credit card. And uh, hello, have you ever gone through such moments? Maybe I'm the only one that uh, goes through that. God is reminding us in Deuteronomy 8. He says, remember the wilderness where you went through, where there were scorpions, where there were snakes, is reminding the children of Israel who provided for you, who helped you. And now hear what he says. He says, while you were going through those moments, there was no water in the desert, but God provided water out of a rock. When was the last time you had water from a rock? Just a rock is hard solidity for our children who are doing science. Uh, when you look at a rock, you don't expect water to come out of a rock. But God is saying, I am able to provide. Where you think it's impossible, with God all things are possible. Something will come out of that. Give us our verse 16, Shikana. Angela. Verse 16. It is the Lord God who fed you in the wilderness. He gave you manna. Do you know the children of Israel, 40 years in the wilderness, God provided for them. Can God for a favor to provide for you and me now? If he could feed over two point something million people in the wilderness. And sometimes the questions that you must ask, when uh, God led the children of Israel, over two million people, where did they buy the food from? There were no shops in the desert. How come that their shoes never grown uh, or torn apart for 40 years? The clothes they were wearing, 40 years they walked and they had everything. He says, remember who fed you in the wilderness with manna. Manna simply means, what is this? They were asking, what is this? That is the name manna. What is this? They didn't know what it was, but God provided. Emias, manna, do you know what manna is? Manna. God provided manna for the children of Israel. They didn't know what it was. You and me. Have you ever experienced a provision whereby you say, where did this come from? How did this happen? You are applying for a job. Somebody uh, was uh, giving a testimony. Uh, she was away because her visa was coming to an end and because of COVID, then she went away. And the sister said, uh, we're going to stand on the word of God. And uh, one of the scriptures are in Deuteronomy. And they were praying through that. And then all of a sudden she received an email from uh, a foreign country where she had gone back to her country. And now they called her to say, actually, you don't need uh, to do anything. All you need is uh, to come back. Buy a ticket and come back. Your job is there. We've kept it for you. And uh, you can always get amazed with the provision of God. So giving is living. I'm laying this foundation so we understand where the story is coming from. And then he continues to say, He fed your fathers with manna in the wilderness, which your fathers did not even know. That's why the name is called manna, because they said, what is this? Every morning they woke up and went outside. They found this white stuff. They gathered it. It was so nutritious. And they ate and they were fed and they were satisfied. You and me, may God provide for you, even as we conclude the sixth month. Verse 16 to 17. He provided this to your fathers, which they didn't even know, that he might humble you, that he might test you to do good in the end. So always God looks at the end result, which is good. Verse 17 and 18, where I want us uh, to, uh, to, to see what God is saying. 
Then you will say in your heart, My power and my strength has gained me this wealth. There are times as human beings, when you get a little bit of something, you know always there is that thought where you begin to think, I made it by myself. Especially now with Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and all that you can mention in the world. When you see people pause, and then people are commenting and you feel good, it's like you've made it by yourself. I am a strong person. I survived the COVID. But when you sit down as a believer, you realize this is not me doing it. This is not my strength. This is the Lord's doing. He says, when you sit down, don't think you have achieved what you have achieved by yourself. It is God who has brought you this far. That's why we call Ebenezer, meaning it is God who has taken me from there to where I am today. It is God who has provided for me. Yes, I go to work, but what is the reminder in verse 18? And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is Him, it is God, who gives you power to make wealth. When you wake up and go to work, it is not the alarm. The alarm just helped you to work because we are so tired. But who gives you the strength to make wealth? And when you read this scripture, we can draw a lot of lessons. It is God who has given you power or strength, other versions say, to get wealth that he may establish you. That is the purpose why God gives you strength. You go and work so that he may establish his covenant which he saw to your fathers as it is this day. The reason God gives you strength to go to work, to go to school and do everything is that he may establish the covenant. And I want you to know that when you give, giving to a Christian, give, when as a Christian you give, you are operating under a covenant. What is a covenant? A covenant is an agreement between you and God to say, God, you have helped me. Here is what I am giving back because you have helped me. So giving as a Christian is by covenant, is by an understanding, is by a revelation to say, God has done so much to me such that when I give, I am giving because God has blessed me. Amen. 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 Giving is living. So God reminds the children of Israel, don't forget what God has done. And if God is the one who gives us his strength to make wealth, is wealth evil? Is wealth evil? Is money evil? No. People may quote scriptures, uh, it is the love of money. When you begin to love money more than you love God, then you are getting into trouble. Everything that we do, even eating, do you know that if you eat too much, it becomes a problem? Even when you talk too much, you end up in trouble. <laughs> even when you sleep too much, you get into trouble. But it is God who gives us strength to make wealth. So God cannot say, Sister Charity, go and make wealth, and then God says wealth is evil. Wealth is not evil. Money is not evil. That's the reason we go for work, so we can make some money. I know some people here, they have been checking their pay slips and their whatever to see how much am I getting. God bless us. Money is good. Wealth is good. Why? Deuteronomy 8, 18. God gives us strength to make wealth. So that when we make this wealth, then we can use it and we can be a blessing to other people. So giving is living. Let's go. We are in the same book of Deuteronomy. Uh, through. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter number 15. 
Deuteronomy chapter number 15. Sorry, Deuteronomy 16. 16, 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16 to 17. Hear what the Bible is saying to the children of Israel and is speaking to us today. Giving is living. Deuteronomy chapter number 16 and verse 16 to 17. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter number 16, verse 16 and 17. Should I understand if you give us Deuteronomy 16, chapter 16 and verse 16 to 17? What is the Bible saying? Giving is living. All the men of the nation are to come to worship the Lord three times a year at the one place of worship, at Passover, Harvest Festival, and the Festival of Shelters. Each man is to bring a gift as he is able in proportion to the blessings that the Lord your God has given him. Amen. God is telling the children of Israel, as you come to the house of the Lord, as you come to worship, bring a gift. What is a gift for? To give. In proportion to how God has blessed you. Now we can begin to answer the question, how? How much do I give? These questions, they always pop up. Give according to what God has blessed you. Because you can't give what you don't have. You can only give from what you have. If God gives you, if you are a farmer, you give from your produce from the farm. And he tells the children of Israel, as you come to the house of the Lord, as you come, let every man take a gift. That's why when you come to the house of the Lord, whatever God has blessed you with in that week, give to the Lord. Give to God. Give to one another in proportion or according to what God has given you, to what God has blessed you with. If you work, even our children who don't work, if your parents give you money, out of that money, take part of it and give to God. And also give to your friends. You know, parents, when we see our children, uh, you give them and then you say, can you share? And they begin to cry and holding everything. We want to get rid of that behavior. To say, please, share with your brother, share with your sister. And it's nowadays that our children, uh, they have grown up in a way that uh, you don't uh, have the communal kind of uh, uh, eating. I liked it when we visited uh, Germany with my wife. At one point, uh, uh, we were with this family. In Germany, we found a very good tradition. When it's time to eat, you sit around the table. They switch off the TV. They switch off the phones. And I think it's something that we can do. You know, people are eating and they are texting. People are eating, they are on Facebook. God have mercy. Concentrate on the food. <laughs> so there's this communal whereby you are sharing. Our children, I think we'll try this Shekhan and Eliezer in our house. You know what we used to do when we were growing up? Mom would cook and then have this uh, dish, a platter, where food is on the center. And then you are sitting around, and then you are taking uh, a portion, put it on your plate, getting from one dish, and you are eating, and you are sharing with everybody. And in those days, you could even share with the neighbors next door. Or do you like uh, so, to taste some of this food and then you go and tell the neighbors, you are begging them uh, to say, come on, taste uh, our dish and you give it to them. So giving is living. So here the children of Israel are told, what God has blessed you with, bring some to the house of God in proportion to what you've received. So when God blesses you, share with others, and above all, give to God. It's very, very important. Give to God. We must give to God. We must remember to give to God. First Chronicles 29. I will read this one. 
First Chronicles, give us on the screen and all of us, let's go to First Chronicles. Where you are in Deuteronomy, you get to Joshua, Samuel, and then go to uh, First Chronicles. First Chronicles, chapter number 29, verse 12 to 14. First Chronicles, chapter number 29. What does the Bible say? On giving. A life of giving, I can assure you, is so fulfilling. When you are a giver, be assured that you shall receive. Remember the scripture we read in Acts 20, we are not turning there, we are turning to Chronicles. Acts 20, verse 32, we read where the Bible, up to 35, where the Bible says, it is more blessed to do what? To give than to receive. In communities, people that give are always known and respected. Uh, First Chronicles 29, verse 12. Hear what the Bible says. First Chronicles 29, verse 12 to 14. This is what the Bible says. Both riches and honor come from you, O God, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and mighty. In your hand is to make great and to give strength to all. Verse 13. Now therefore, our God, we thank you. We praise your glorious name. But who am I? And who are my people? that we should be able to offer to you willingly as this for all things. How many things? All things comes from where? Are you reading your Bibles? All things, verse 14. First Chronicles 14, uh, 29, 14. But who am I and who are my people? that we should be able to offer so willingly as this for all things all things are whose? comes from where? are yours they come from you and of your own we have given to you you hear what King Solomon is saying here? This is a king they have just offered to God. Listen to verse 15 as well. For we are foreigners and people who are just going through this life. As we are all, we were all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. He is praying to God. They are just given to God. But he says, what we have given comes from you. We are just giving from what you have given us. I gave an illustration last time. We, we, all of us are children of God. That's why the Bible calls us children. And as parents, we have got children. If you give Emias a sweet right now, and ask back for that switch to say, can we share? What is going to happen? Ask Nana to give you a switch and then you give it back to Nana. Or maybe Nana hasn't got a switch, my God. I'm gonna be in trouble here. <laughs> Mommy, give me a switch. And then when we give that switch, and then you ask to say, can I have that switch back? We can do that experiment uh, and see if it works. Let's see I have, uh, what we have. Let's have uh, this car. Emias. Come and get a, 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 no, that's a switch, but this is a car. Uh, I want to give you this car. Hold it. Now give it back to me. Is this mine or yours? It's yours. Do you want it back? Or should I keep it? You want it. 
So you want to take it? Oh God. So that has been taken. And exactly that's what we do. God gives you something. 